So this is the original intro to this video and it made a lot of sense and I actually think it went pretty well, but I forgot to turn my mic on. So I filmed a new one, which is this one. So welcome to Bill. My name is Caleb and today we're gonna be kind of calling an audible or doing plan B uh, for today's video. I had planned on, ooh, can you guys see it? No, you can't, it's in the background. I planned on showing you the engine. Uh, I've got it out, I've been working on it, been putting everything back together. Found a lot of problems uh, as I pulled it out, which you could probably guess. And I figured out why the car was not moving. So that's really great. I'm stoked that I found that out. But uh, these cars are not super common in the States and as a result, it's pretty hard to get parts. Now you can get parts. You can basically build this car from scratch because they're just people all over the place manufacturing parts for them. Unfortunately, most of those places are in the UK or somewhere in Europe and not in the States. So getting things like gaskets and seals and stuff like that takes a really long time. And when I got into this thing, I realized there were a bunch of gaskets and seals that I needed that I had not already ordered. So I ordered those and they're taking forever to get here, um, but they will be here and we'll be able to get into that uh, video and get everything put back together on it. So what we're gonna do today is some other things that have been uh, just kind of looming and things that really need to be done before I drive this car and one of those things is the brake drums. So we replaced the front brakes on this car. We did not touch the rear. The brake drums in the rear need some major work and I've never done brake drums before so I'm just gonna kind of walk through it today and hopefully figure everything out. Now, spoiler alert, I did end up finding that I needed to buy more parts for the brake drums, but I still got everything back together. We'll delve back into those when those parts come in. Uh, and then later in the video, we are going to be repairing some very, very serious rust. Turns out, uh, the owner of this car has resprayed it, which I'm not that, it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm gonna respray it again. Um, but they did some questionable bodywork, and you're gonna see that later in the video. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get to work in the, in the past. All right, so we just finished the other side and it's time to move to this one. Now, anybody that does these things will tell you they're not hard, they're just finicky. They're just kind of tricky. And the reason is everything is under tension all the time. So everything right now is being held in place by tension. And there's basically three parts that you need to understand about a brake drum uh, in order to be able to do this job. Very simple. You've got your brake shoes, which is basically like your pad for your caliper rotor setup. And then you've got this wheel cylinder down here, and this is basically the piston. So if you think of a caliper and a rotor, the piston pushes out, clamping the brakes. This pushes the drums outwards. Up here is uh, the part that kind of works with that, and it is an adjuster that makes sure that they're pushing out evenly. So that allows these things to push out against the drum. And then you also have all these springs. There's a spring here, there's a spring on the bottom to hold these two things in place. There's a spring for the emergency brake, which is completely mechanical. So it's completely separate from the hydraulic system. That way, if your hydraulic system fails for some reason, you can pull the e-brake, you can still stop your car. It runs off a little lever right here. And then you have two uh, springs in the center of your drums just to keep them centered and keep them in place. And all of that works together to hold these things. Now, we did take the actual drum itself off. That's a serviceable, serviceable part. So we ran that to our auto parts store. They're turning it down for us. It's gonna be done in about an hour. So uh, we decided to come back and put all these parts in and wait. Um, and then by the time we get done with this, by the time we eat some lunch, we'll be able to go back and get the drums, throw them on, and this job will be done. So the first thing we gotta do is just disconnect all these springs. The way I'm gonna do that is disconnect these two center springs first. Then I'm actually gonna disconnect the emergency brake spring and pull one of the drums out of the little mounting tabs here. And that's gonna give us a little bit of relief to get the other springs off. Let's do it. So we got the drum back from the auto parts store. They have a machine called a brake lathe that they use to spin these down. So these had major grooves cut into them and now you can see they're very smooth. Now I know all this looks rough, but if you look, this is the braking surface here and it is super, super smooth. You can see the machine marks on it. Very happy with that. So these should stop really great now. We can throw this back on. The 
that cannot be the right way. Um, I watched some videos online of guys doing this on this specific car, and there's drums just slotted right on. They're brand new drums, which probably helps. Um, so maybe that's it. High in sight, I probably should have cleaned the cylinder a little bit, or at least sprayed some PB Blaster on it. I think that the cylinder is seizing. And that makes a lot of sense. So we are going to order some new ones. I'm, I'm actually almost certain that's what this is. Now, if it's not, let me know in the comments below. But I'm pretty sure that the cylinder is, is not moving in and out like it's supposed to. And that's why these were so difficult to get on. It's all making sense now. Anyway, I'm ordering. I actually ordered some new cylinders already. So when they come in, we'll just pull these back off. Throw them in there. Just do it all over again. And uh, it'll be done. So I think I'm going to leave this where it is for now, and we can move to some rust repair. Fun. I actually do enjoy it. All right, so it is no secret that this car has rust. Turn this off. There we go. Now you can hear. And I mean, you look at this car and you see stuff like this, and this looks bad, but it's just not. Honestly, it's just not that bad. Um, this most of this I believe is just going to come right off with like a wire wheel and we'll get into that I got to figure out how to get this trim off, but we'll just wire wheel this down. We'll body work it a little bit I think it's gonna be just fine. It's not you know, the metal is not like weak So that's good and it's really not that big of a deal But the issues obviously you guys that maybe haven't seen it yet We did this whole floor pan. It was rusted all the way out then you can actually <laughs> you can see through the floor right there so that's obviously got to get fixed. Um, there's some holes in here that got to get fixed. So this spot down here, um, it looks like they uh, maybe covered it with Bondo or something, which is actually pretty common. You'll find a lot of cars that have stuff like that done. And if I'm being honest, I've done it. Not Bondo, but I used to cut rust out and then fill it with fiberglass or make a fiberglass panel and put it on there. And it honestly kind of worked, but now I know how to weld. So. We are going to be tackling some of this stuff. Now, this is not super consequential in terms of design because I'm going to be building side skirts for this, so this will all get covered up. So it's gonna be close, but if it's not exact, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. And then down here um, is gonna be very industrial as well. Um, I would really love to do something custom down there where my feet are gonna be, because you can actually see that. And then in here, we'll just find all the weak spots and cut them out and then just patch in little panels, and that'll be cool. Um, but I think down there is going to be bare in the end. So uh, we'll try to do something cool with that. Um, and then let's see. All of this is all pretty solid. The firewall is good. Um, underneath the car is fine. There's no like random holes. There's no holes in the frame, which is really good. Um, and then you got some down in there too. You see where that light's coming through right there. Um, that's got to be fixed as well. We'll go ahead and fix the stuff that's known. That's an issue. I don't want holes in the floor when I take this thing for a drive for the first time. So we'll seal all that up and uh, yeah, and then we'll be, I mean, that'll be like a huge thing done. So let's start cutting stuff. So that is body filler, which if you buy an old car, you gotta be ready to see this kind of stuff. I mean, to have rust repair properly fixed is very expensive. So most people will opt to do it themselves. And I get that. I, I mean, I got, I got sympathy for that. Empathy, however you wanna say it, I've, I've done it. But that is also why I learned how to weld because I didn't want to pay people. But man, look, so you can see this wasn't all the way sealed. And so it started rusting again on the outside because it wasn't covered properly. And then it also started rusting on the inside and just got all up in here. Ooh, that's no good. So what I'm doing, there's a major, a major kind of panel right here that is, um, that is structural. And I'm just checking it out, which it's got, because of the repair that was made, now you've got damage up underneath here. Uh, which probably would have been avoidable had it been repaired properly, but it is what it is. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do, I can tell this is all cancerous. Um, I want to kind of keep this curve. I don't know if I'm going to need it, but I'm going to keep it for now anyway. So I think for the welding purposes, I'm going to come up here and then go straight across to there. Now, Hart did send me these tools that you guys see me using all the time, and I told you I would put them through the paces and tell you what I thought. Um, I don't like the color. <laughs> I like the color on the shelf, but working with it, you know, it's just going to get dirty and you just got to be okay with that. I'll probably paint them or something to freshen them up. But um, overall, I really like them. Um, they work really well. They're super powerful. They're super strong and they're really convenient. Like, 
cutting tools and stuff. Hart's not paying me to say this. They didn't ask me to say this. I'm doing this for you guys. Um, you see these at Walmart, and I know because they're at Walmart, you can kind of think, well, maybe it's not a legit tool. They are legit. They're really, really good. And I've actually replaced, I had all DeWalt stuff. I've replaced it all with this. And um, I really love it. I love it just as much. The only thing that I would like to see from Hart is a bigger battery. So you got these two amp hour batteries, which are great uh, for your drill. They're good for your basically everything. But when you get into running this and running like the DA sander, I run them for really long periods of time typically, um, especially the sander. And, uh, and it would be cool to have a bigger battery to just let it run, let it eat for a longer time. So, but I mean, other than that, they have been really great. And you can tell, I mean, I don't, I mean, I abuse them. I'm not like babying these things. So I do like this brand. I will continue to use it. Um, and thank you, Hart, for sending me some stuff to test out. So you can see more rust underneath there, which is bad. This is the stuff that was bubbling through. It looks like we've gotten away from rust up here, so that's good. We still got some up in here, so we'll have to cut that away. So I'm just gonna keep cutting apart. I don't really care about cutting cars, as you guys know. We're just gonna keep cutting. And uh, this all feels really good. We got some rust right there, so we may come up right here and cut right across. That's what I'm gonna do. So the next step is the floorboard. And I'm just gonna start cutting away until I run out of messed up material and then we'll make a patch, I guess. I don't know, wish me luck. So last night I made this very cool, I think, patch panel and just kind of folded some stuff. We did a little welding. I love the way steel looks when you weld it, it's so cool. Um, and did some bead rolling in here. See, I put these X's in there press this little edge, I think that's called a step, I'm not really sure, um, just to flatten everything out, which totally worked, which was one of y'all's suggestions actually, so thank you for that. I got a little bit of tin canning when I put these X's in, and then I ran this little step on the outside and it flattened everything back out, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then I put it in there and realized that it's not gonna work. Well, most of it's not gonna work. The patch that I need is only about this much, so I'm gonna have to cut out my X's, which I'm really bummed about. Um, and then up here, I'm gonna use most of this. But yeah, there's a frame rail that runs kind of right here, and I don't want to disturb any of that just yet. So uh, I am gonna just cut this out and make it fit and we'll weld it in. It's still gonna work really well, it's still gonna look okay, but I'm just kinda bummed that I did all that. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to basically throw it all away. Um, I did decide, you'll notice I, that is not factory, obviously. I did decide that wherever I repair panels or patch in things, I'm gonna make it painfully obvious that it's been patched. I just think it'd be cool to show like how much of this car has been touched. Um, so every panel that I make is not gonna match the factory. It's going to be something like this uh, that I can kind of look at or anybody can look at and say, oh, that's been replaced. I think that's kind of cool and it'll just show how far this car's come. Um, so we're gonna cut this out. I'll finish this cut. I kind of drew out where I needed to cut. Um, we'll weld this in and then we'll work on the final pat patch for the floorboard, which is the one that goes right behind this one. Well, this is kind of anticlimactic. Uh, it is evident I need a new floor pan on the driver's side. Uh, the passengers, jury's still out. I gotta dig into there and just kind of see what's going on. But when I pulled all that black tar stuff up, uh, there was just more rust, and it's all in real complex places. So I tried to make my patch panel fit, and it just wouldn't. Um, I tried a second patch panel, and that really, really couldn't get it to fit either. Um, and so I just don't think it's worth my time to try to fix all of those places. Um, so I think what I'll end up doing is 
um, doing that when we do the interior. So we will be doing an interior on this car, sort of, um, which will be really cool, I think. But it's going to require that we have obviously some solid floor pans. So sorry that this is kind of how we're going to end, but <laughs> this is it. Um, as far as rust goes, structurally, I think the car is sound enough to take out on the road, which is pretty cool. So in the next video, we are going to be, can you see it? Oh, it's blurry. Let me stand in front of it. There we go. So in the next video, we're going to be uh, putting the engine back together, uh, cleaning it up, painting it, doing all kinds of cool stuff, and getting it ready to go back into the car um, so that we can be driving it again. Well, for the first time. This car hasn't driven in 27 years, so that's why I've started changing the title to Abandoned MGB GT because it was abandoned since 93, and we're going to get it back on the road. So, um, not what I planned on doing first on this build, but this is what we're going to do. We'll get this stuff out of the way, and then we can do the fun stuff. Well, the other fun stuff. All right, I think that's it. Secret word of the day is going to be gold. Gold is the secret word of the day. Uh, I like gold. Gold's cool, so you can type that below if you want me to know that you watched the entire video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Oh, a couple of things. The MR2 is still going to be on Cars and Bids. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Uh, it'll go up on Monday the 24th. And uh, also, I've had a lot of questions about the fats and where's the fats and when's the fats and coming back, all that stuff. So I'm going to make a video on that as well um, just to kind of update you guys on what's going on with that car. It is coming back. It's not gone forever. Um, but we just had to take a break for a lot of different reasons. And we'll make a video about that just to catch you guys up on everything that's going on in the personal built life community um, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. That's a good word, behind the scenes. So a lot of that has to do with why the Fatson has been gone for a little while. Um, but yeah, it will be coming back. We'll see you guys in the next one. I'm gonna get out of here. It stinks real bad, and I'm sweaty, and I want something to eat. <laughs>